I guess by now um, you've realized it's all about AI. So, Your Highnesses, Your Excellencies, and distinguished guests, I just want to say it's an honor to be here with you today. Revolutionary inventions come around rarely, but it's kind of like a great product. You don't know you need it, but once you have it, you don't know how you ever lived without it. The emergence of generative AI is the iPhone moment for the information technology industry, and it's now soaring. By 2030, 80% of the people around the world will interact with robots on a daily basis. Generative AI is, in my judgment, the biggest invention of our generation. You know, 55 years ago, we landed man on the moon. And we've seen a lot of revolutions, and some of our colleagues have talked about them on stage today. We've gone from analog to digital. We've been through the dot-com era. And now you think about what we have in our hands. You know, the Apollo 11 guidance computer that actually sent that rocket to the moon and returned man safely to the Earth is 900 million times slower than that digital phone in your pocket. So we're experiencing this computational renaissance that has powered a transition from the mainframe to the client server, and now it's going to NVIDIA's supercomputer and it's enabling the adoption of Gen AI at an unprecedented pace across both the consumer, the business, and the public sector worlds. Here's a survey for you. EY asked 1,200 CEOs globally if they will invest in Gen AI. And guess how many said yes? All 1,200. And why is that? It's kind of like Adam, His Excellency, and Arvin was saying, this is a quantum leap forward in productivity. And what does a quantum leap forward in productivity mean to the kingdom of Saudi Arabia? Well, let's think of it this way. The impact of Gen AI on productivity has the potential to add 16 and a half trillion rials, or 4.4 trillion US dollars, to the global economy every year. What's that mean? That's like adding an incremental Germany to the global GDP of the world. Now, I want to tell you a little story about ServiceNow. We're live on 15 Gen AI solutions, and they are driving 40% productivity in our company on average, and our developer innovation is up 52%. And why is that? Well. Our LLMs are learning very quickly. Their accuracy is increasing with every interaction. And what we're seeing is AI is unleashing human potential and enabling people to do exciting and positive things for the world. So I believe that hidden in our dreams is our destiny. And nobody knows that better than the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. And dreaming big is the differentiator between really revolutionizing with AI or falling behind. So I'd like to applaud the boldness and the vision 2030. Look at NEOM. They're conquering the desert with information technology taking the uninhabitable and making it completely safe and prosperous. Look at the economic diversification of this amazing country, a blueprint for sustainable growth, renewable energy, truly a renaissance, and the healthcare transformation, saving lives. Look at Seha, the largest virtual hospital in the world, democratizing the access to healthcare services for the citizens like no other. So ServiceNow is honored to be a part of this journey, and I'd like to thank the strong support of His Excellency, El Falai, and I, please, amazing, obviously the Ministry of Investment, and His Excellency, who needs no introduction from me. What a job today on stage. Al Sawaha at the helm 
of the Ministry of Communication Information Technology. What a leader. What a transformer. I would just like to tell you a little story. ServiceNow has helped KSA's Ministry of Justice digitize 180 business services in the wake of the COVID pandemic. We also transformed the employee experience at the Ministry of Human Resources and Social Development. With one platform integrating HR, finance, and IT requests to resolve all the problems, but do so in half the time in a way that people are pleased when they use the system. And now we're ready to put AI to work for the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. So here's the situation. Technology debt is the biggest obstacle to innovation. It's a global issue with massive, massive economic implications. According to the Wall Street Journal, tech debt has cost U.S. organizations alone $2.4 trillion a year. Just to put that in context, that's two and a half times more than the U.S. government pays to serve the annual interest on its debt. So to deliver a positive ROI is a big thing. And how do we do it? We give one pane of glass that resides above all the legacy systems that enables you to connect people, processes, data, and all of your devices. Leaders are now moving away from technical debt and they're driving generational shift from on-premise systems, databases, and on-premise apps to intelligent cloud platforms like Atoms, like Arvin's. So now, I would just really like to make it clear what we're doing. ServiceNow is the AI platform for digital transformation. And it's the only software company in the enterprise that connects on one platform with one architecture and one data model, everything in IT, security, developer operations, the employee experience, and the customer experience. And you don't have to rethink what you've done for the last half century. It just makes everything work a lot better. So why are we going after Gen AI? Because we've been doing it for five plus years and we started doing it with NVIDIA many years ago. And Jensen Wong, who I know you know well, is not only running ServiceNow, but he's a great partner. And we're building domain-specific LLMs. And what does that mean? It means they run faster, they cost less, they're more accurate, and they're more secure. So already, we have embedded generative AI workflows with human-like conversations for back and forth discussions that will impact your employee relationships and your customer relationships. You can now text in natural language to code a new application. You can text to reorient how work flows and how you're gonna automate new business processes to change the game. We're talking about thousands of engineers that are working around the clock to bring specific Gen AI use cases to your doorstep so we can fully leverage the capabilities of KSA and your great 2030 vision. So, I just want to tell you a few things we're working on. Healthcare, healthcare is very big for you and your 2030 vision. Think about big pharma, four, maybe five drugs they could possibly bring to market a year. Unfortunately, the clinical trials fail 90% of the time and they don't get most of them out of the door. Gen AI will radically transform and change that because 30% of them now will be driven by Gen AI. Think about utilities. Half the world doesn't have access to quality drinking water, and now it will. So literally any single industry that you can think of, including energy, oil, and gas, which you know better than anybody, renewable energy systems, solar panels, all being optimized with Gen AI. Think about satellite and drone images of crops, soil moisture status from sensors, weather forecasts, and then tie that into billing information, human observations, and optimization of water and how you use the natural resources of the land. So after you're all done with that, 
let's transform the citizen services. No more 800 numbers, no more waiting on lines, 24 by 7 real-time generative AI services for citizens. Smart cities, everything full speed ahead. So that is where we're headed with you, and that is where we're headed as a company. A lot of people ask me, what will this do to jobs, Bill? Well, in 1966, Time Magazine ran an expose, and they basically said that computers will replace 90% of the jobs in this world. Only 10% will have jobs. They'll be highly paid executives, and the state will have to subsidize the regular people. But I'll tell you, in the words of Joseph Bradley, the CEO of Autonomous, who is here with us today, people fear only what they don't understand. And Gen AI is democratizing access to knowledge. So regardless of your economic or educational status, as His Excellency said, along with Arvin, all you have to do is have an intellectual curiosity and be able to ask the computer a question. So it's our responsibility to join the intelligence revolution and put AI to work for everyone. So I want to sum it up by simply saying, I am so honored to share in your commitment to the people of the kingdom. We're going to invest with you, and here's what we're going to do. We're investing future innovation in KSA with Garage Startup District. Post-accelerator graduate program, top startup graduates will get a complete access to the NOW platform. We will train them, we will mentor them, we will certify them, and we will get them prepared for high-paying jobs in the kingdom or anywhere in the global economy. And yes, we are very focused on diversity, equity, and inclusion, and have a record with women like no other in the information technology industry. So I want you to please register that. We're investing in future talent in partnership with Saudi Digital Academy. We're creating a ServiceNow Academy. It's the first of its kind in the region, and we're going to train thousands of Saudis on digital skills related to this new generation platform. We're opening two dedicated in-country ServiceNow data centers. Two. We're putting up $500 million in investment for regional and government transformation. We have moved on new Middle East, North Africa regional headquarters in Riyadh. And we are launching the NOW platform in Arabic in our Washington release. We always name it after a place. This, this quarter it's Washington. And that'll be done later this month. And hear this, the domain-specific LLMs will be in Arabic. So we are all in on AI. And I am personally resolute and proud to say that the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia works with ServiceNow. And when the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia works, the world works. Thank you very, very much.